Welcome back to the Diecast Museum. It's been a minute since I've seen you guys. I haven't made a video in a month. Unfortunately, I came down with a pretty nasty cold that affected my voice terribly. I'm all better now and ready to start filming. And boy, have I got a lot of things to film for you guys today. I've been buying Hot Wheels, Green Light, Matchbox, you name it, anything 164 scale that catches my eye, whether that be on eBay or sometimes at my local big box stores. Uh, occasionally at the Aurelia Diecast, my local hobby store. Either way, lots of cool things I want to share with you guys. I found some pretty cool stuff, especially from Greenlight, that I want to share with you first. This is a video I've been setting up for basically the last month. It's a whole bunch of really cool 2004 Mercury Marauder, a casting we haven't seen from Greenlight since I think around 2005 or 6. Might not be that long ago, but I've got the original first release to show you. That car apparently is worth about 150 US dollars if you can find one on eBay. I've heard that it's very hard to find, so I won't be opening mine up. It's in a pristine package. It's been hanging on my wall in the background here, right behind my chair at the review table for years. So we're going to look at that one and compare it to the new models. There's a few differences I wanted to show you. And also some really cool big old 1978 Ford F-250s behind me. These are part of the classified ad series, as are the Mercury Marauders, series one and two. So I assume there's gonna be more. There's only one casting in each series, interestingly. So it's a one casting series, so far as I can tell. And we're also going to look at probably one of my favorite castings that Greenlight has released in early 2024, and that is the Chevy and or GMC Suburban. So I've got all four models that have been released to date. I think there's actually three. I've opened a few more than three, but we've got three awesome models. Everything open for the loose review. One of those is from the Hitch and Toe, so it comes with a cool little bow rider boat, also out on the review table to show you guys. The only two I'm missing as of time of filming, which is uh, early March 2024, is the exclusive Las Vegas models. There was two convention models I don't have. But other than that, it's a pretty easy casting to find. And we're going to look at those as well as do a roll test. Check out the details on all these fantastic models. So a bit of a shorter video, but a bit of a longer intro. Showing some face here. Uh, I don't always show my face in the videos because I like to get right down to the content, which is probably what I'll be doing in more of the upcoming videos. But I'm always here to say hello. And thanks for sticking with me. If you're new to the channel, awesome. Please consider subscribing if you like the content. I've got about 500 videos going back to 2006. For your viewing pleasures, should you not find anything else to watch on YouTube that's newer, I've got lots of good old content, so check it out. Much appreciate all of your comments, and let's get into it. Alrighty then, here's the layout today. As you can see, everything open already for the loose review, as well as the package review, with the exception of the 2004 Mercury Marauder First Edition from Greenlight. This was from the Muscle Car Garage, a limited edition, as are all green lights. Um, sold in 2008, and that's when I bought mine. I wish I'd bought more than one. Had I known what they would be worth, I thought it was really cool. By the time, I was only buying one casting um, of each car that I really liked, and now I buy, well, at least two. But this 2004 Mercury Marauder in all gloss black with an unpainted metal base. You can tell the older green light models as well if it's open up because they have a green rivet. That does not mean it's a green machine. And if this was a green machine, I'm sure it'd be worth even more, I don't know. Opening hood, which we'll see on the models that have been re-released in the classified ad series. This was from uh, MCG Series 9. So there was five other vehicles of which I may have some of those in my collection, I'm not sure. MCG being Muscle Car Garage, of course. And uh, 2008 copyright on that. Let's see what the license plate says. MCG9. Very cool. So there's the re-release. These were just uh, put for sale early 2024. Uh, what are these? An exclusive. So they are an exclusive. You're not going to find them at the big box store. LBE. I'm not sure exactly what that is. We'll find out as we go, perhaps. But they've got this really interesting classified sort of ads with all these vintage classified ads on it, which we can actually read easier on the open versions because obviously there's no plastic or car in the way. We'll take a look at some of that, but they're kind of period correct, I guess. 
and they are different ads and background for the truck, which was series one. And as you can see, it's got the price of these trucks in the ads, supposedly. If they were really there, I don't know for sure. But it's kind of fun. It's a fun collection. And of course, each casting comes with two paint variations. So we've got the red and the black versions, each with the same kind of trim, that gray uh, two-tone side coloring, if you will. The Mercury Marauder, well, it comes in silver or this deep metallic blue. And I have them opened up, so we're going to look at some of the details very close up here when I get the camera on a tripod so that I can look at these with you. Check out any opening parts, do the roll test, and very important, the slight differences between the 2008 release and the latest release. Uh, I've also got those Chevy and GMC Suburbans. So both companies made the same truck essentially. We've got barn door and drop tailgate versions released by Greenlight so far. Very nice, big, accurately scaled truck with a lot of detail and of course all that new Greenlight quality that we've come to see and love in 2024 on their models. Lots of nice shiny windows, shiny paint jobs, straight rolling wheels, and so much so, they roll so well, I had to park them in this little divot on my table so they don't kind of take that little incline or decline off onto the floor where all the other cars waiting for review are sitting patiently. So let's get right into it and look at the Mercury Marauders from Classified Ads. That's Series 2. The Series 1 Fords. A little look at the packaging and some Suburban roll tests as well as a quick look at the package from each of those series. Hitch and Toe. That was Series 29, so four vehicles in that collection, four vehicles with trailers. All-terrain, I do have most of that collection, so we'll be looking at that in a future video, perhaps. Oh, that's the coolest one, in my opinion. And then we've got First Responders, which is a Hubby 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 exclusive. Let's roll these Marauders on over for a closer look. Nice rolling cars, as you can see and opening hoods on these particular models. Nice uh, wheels that you can see have five spokes cast properly with uh, no flashing in behind them. So aftermarket wheels, I would have preferred non aftermarket wheels on this car. I'm pretty sure those are aftermarket either that they just look kind of funny. Perhaps the tires are a bit too small. Um, and what I'm talking about is when you look at the first release, uh, they look to be the same wheels, so maybe not aftermarket. It's the tires are a lot smaller on this latest release, which can be easily changed given that the tires are uh, interchangeable and you don't need any special tools to take tires on off. But I think it would have been nice if they had put larger tires on this classified ad series Mercury Marauder. It just looks a little funny in aftermarket to me with those little tiny low profile tires. Yeah, it's not opening easily. Let's try this one. Oh, I do have a thumbnail there. Okay, so that one opened up no problem. Of course, you can use a small tool, which I neglected to bring to the table here for the review. But as you can see, you've got a black plastic molded motor in there. And that would be the high output motor. I think the same as the ones that the police used in the Ford Crown Victorias of the time. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that that was a very powerful um, version of this car, the Marauder. Mercury Marauder and Crown Victoria sharing a lot of components other than the grill and a few other um, minor details. You can see at the back, it looks just like a Crown Victoria other than it does have Marauder stamped into the plastic bumper skin. So really nice models. Glad to see this car come back and hopefully we see more Marauders in a more accessible lineup other than just these LBE exclusive cars. And maybe a re-release of the black 2004 Mercury Marauder for anyone that really wanted one of those. Because that is the iconic color that this car came in. Amongst other colors, I'm sure. But this one, for me, is the, the color I've always seen them for sale when you do find them on classified ads. Fitting that uh, they would be found on the classified ad series. So without reading all of the stuff in here. Oh, there's the, there's the motor details right there. 4.6 liter double overhead cam. 32 valve V8, 18-inch uh, alloy wheels, so I guess those were the stock wheels. 
and dual exhaust and you know a whole lot more visit your dealer today there's a few other ads on there we are looking for highly skilled motivated dynamic individuals with strong communication skills kenny must possess a love for teaching 12 dollars an hour well dance classes you know mortgage solutions bookkeeping services now of course there's no phone numbers in here they would have had to remove those for privacy reasons if these are real ads which i wouldn't be surprised that they are maybe not necessarily from 2003 so we do have a 2003 Marauder and a 2004, but really no difference in the casting. And then we've got the 1978 Ford F-250. Look at the black one first. Really nice dual mold wheels, I'm pretty sure. Chrome band with uh, kind of a grayer center. Could just be that the plastic is a different shade, but it almost looks like a dual mold. I doubt it is, actually. It's just really well done. Got the diamond plate rear bumper drop uh, hitch there, as you can see, very nicely detailed. Let's get that little floof off the tailgate. A few little floofs on here from sitting out on the table, I guess, for the last month. Nice shiny paint. I've now just kind of marred it with a bit of skin residue, <laughs> but that comes off really nicely with a microfiber rag. And all metal, super details. Check out the license plate. The FOMO Co. Yeah, not getting these would definitely lead to FOMO for me, which of course means fear of missing out on a beautiful 1978 Ford F-250 casting that rolls beautifully. Nice window trim. Which color do you guys like better? I don't know for sure. I, I do like the red a lot. I think that one stands out. But as you can see, superb rolling vehicles very smooth and uh the trucks well we saw them in the packaging already we'll take a quick look at the classifieds and i think it is going to be the same yeah it's got the same dance class there on the bottom so we don't have to look at that twice that is the classified ad series let's take a look at some suburbans now and i do indeed have three different models all available right now at the time of filming one of them i opened twice and the silver model is the hitch and tow. So it comes with a boat and a hitch. Pretty cool. Lots of different things to look at here. And we'll go in for a quick look. But first, the packaging. We've got the first responders. 91 GMC Suburban. New York City EMS. It's emergency medical services. Very cool. like the background. Very flashy. Not much on the back. Not sure if this was part of a set. I guess not. It's only got the one vehicle listed. All Terrain. This is still the latest release of All Terrain, so far as I can tell. And that's Series 15. Found this at uh, the Walmart, I believe. Or at least they were for sale at Walmart. I found the other ones. Maybe I bought this one on eBay. Um, some pretty cool trucks in here. I've got, I'm pretty sure, all the rest of these trucks for a future review. But I've also got another Suburban. So we'll do that one as well at that time just to kind of put it in with the collection and then of course the hardest one to find for me was the hitch and tow I was able to find these from a Canadian hobby store in Alberta which was pretty sweet and I got a couple of them so I could open up one with you guys but hitch and tow I used to collect these in their entirety but you know a lot of these trucks I already have very cool trailers as well though and I just don't have the space anymore to display all them so i really only get the ones that really speak to me and of course the suburban the 87 suburban is that big boxy iconic truck of my childhood in fact my parents had two suburbans that i remember fondly growing up uh traveling the canada and the usa and we put a lot of miles on those trucks mind you those were the next generation 1991 and 93 i believe those trucks were let's get on with the show and go in for a closer look at these awesome rigs the all-terrain 1990 chevrolet suburban has a aftermarket chrome push bar with fog lights you've got those really nice square headlamps with the rectangular signal lamps below this is a 2500 as seen on the door really nice wheels and tires goodyear tires on this truck it's got the drop tailgate the uh, power glass window that would go down into the tailgate and just every detail has been accounted for so far as i can tell on the bottom we've got a single exhaust and a nice glossed unpainted chassis 
Very heavy truck. I mean, it is a big truck. We'll put it next to the Ford just to show you the size of these trucks. And when we get a lifted Suburban, that's going to be pretty cool too. But I really like that they started out with these stock versions for size comparisons. These are full-size trucks. And uh, yeah, we've got the 1987 Chevrolet Suburban K20. This one, as you can see, has the barn doors. So different arrangement. Glass would not open on these doors. Of course, has the hitch. Now, this is the hitch and tow compatible hitch, which is quite different than the hitch. First time I've seen this detailed hitch on the classified ads trucks. I wonder if we'll be seeing that more often. Probably not for hitch and tow series because these are tried, tested, and true for playability. I mean, we can do that again. I haven't even removed the boat from the, uh, the trailer, so it's still screwed on with one screw, but that's a good, strong hitch, and you can certainly do a bit of light play with it to remove the boat, just that one screw. Check out the nice paint job on the trailer and a really cool-looking boat. Those plastic covers for travel and or rain protection. Nicely done. And, uh, yeah, the truck, it's got the different headlights for the different year. Got the stacked rectangular headlights, one on top of each other, the sig signal lights in the grill. Now, it does have a separately cast hood, but it does not open. And then we've got the 91 GMC Suburban. So this one has the same headlight and grill arrangement as the 1990 Chevrolet Suburban. Trucks use the same parts, just different badging. We've got the light bar, of course, on this truck. And it has the barn doors versus the drop tailgate. Being more of a utilitarian truck, these doors generally stood up to a bit more uh, work, I would say. A little less fragile. Very heavy, heavy trucks equipped with bench seats. And uh, it looks like it's even got the third row seat in the back. So this would be an eight passenger truck. Two in the front, two in the back, four. Well, maybe seven, but you could certainly fit eight people in here easily. I think the back row would have uh, only two seat belts, if memory serves. But I could be wrong. No headrests on these seats, the older style. Before those safety rules came into place requiring head rests or head restraints, whatever you want to call them. I guess it's both. That's what I have to share with you guys today. We've got lots more coming. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you in the next. So much cool stuff to share with you here in the museum and probably a little tours in order again since it's been a little while. Happy hunting.